we go. Okay. Hello, Evelyn. This is so fun. <laughs> it's crap day in YouTube world. <laughs> I've got all right. My crochet hook, my scissors, and plastic bags. Great. You have lots of white ones. A lot of mine are um mine are brown. So I mine are kind of I wanted to ask you if I can use thicker bags at all. These thicker ones? Um you can. You can. Yeah, you can use any. It might be a little harder to actually do the crocheting, but um, you can cut them. So, yeah, I'll show you exactly how to do it. But I, I worked on mine yesterday, so I got a little bit done. So this is the same crochet hook. I actually made what you call this is plarn. You... Um, Plastic yarn. You make the yarn into plarn and then you crochet with it. So mm -hmm. if you already know how to crochet, you can, you know, that's good. But, you know, crocheting is not really that hard. And it's, it is a little tricky with um, the plastic, but you kind of get used to it. Yeah. So I found a really good way to make the plarn, the best way to do it. And I, I have made these before with my home at class and I didn't do, I didn't make it this way. So you'll have an advantage. Uh, I have, <laughs> most of my bags are brown. So I wish we could trade. <laughs> it's really good if you can have different um, colors. Okay. It I makes the mat. Blue and blue because some plastic bags are like yellow and blue. Yeah. So <laughs> like when I was at the school, I had people give me bags like way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really cool. Uh, I got so many bags. So if you want to do this as a project um, and you, you know, want to plan ahead and you ask people for bags. I don't um, have to ask anyone for bags. I had a whole cabinet full of bags. Because <laughs> I was raised by my mother and she was a little bit hoardy with them. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing about it is, too, this is a really good way to recycle these and to feel yeah. like, you know, I'm actually not spending money to do this craft and I'm at, I am going to put it to good use. Mm -hmm. You can make, like, we're going to make a mat, but you can also make bags this way, you mm -hmm. know, make like, I thought it would be cool to just make, you know, your own reusable um, grocery bags. You could make just like a bag with a handle <laughs> and then you <laughs> we're taking all of these. I'm sorry. The irony does not. I, mean, I know, but you know these Aww. things are so flimsy. Yeah. So when you bring them home, it's like you know they rip. Let's take 100 plastic grocery bags, cut them apart, and spend hours crocheting them so we can make a reusable grocery bag. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, you could make, I thought it would be cool to make like a bathroom trash can. You could make like a basket, make a bottom and then just make it like a, you know, a bathroom. I mean, it is kind of a weird craft. You I was know? thinking of um, making like. So this is how I like friends. making what? Making bags for friends for Christmas or something. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what, for anybody who's watching, just to show the process, like I like to like fold it really flat. And if you have a table, it's really best to do it kind of like flat on the mm -hmm. table and just make it and fold it as small as you can like this and just make it flat. And then I cut off like this is the part where it's the bottom of the bag. And you might want to do this like over a trash can because it'll make a mess. Mm -hmm. So then just cut this part off and that part will be trash. Mm -hmm. And then cut off your handles like right at the bottom of where the handles are. Yeah. You know. Oops. So you want to make sure this is completely cut off where the handles go. <laughs> so you cut off that and then you have this strip like this. And then you're just going to about, I'm saying about an inch and a half or so. 
I don't really measure it to be exact. It doesn't really matter if it's not exact, but you can just kind of gauge and measure maybe an inch and a half or so. Two inches might be too small, too big. And then you just cut the strips. And what I did was I just like had a grocery, I have like a paper bag here to put all of my loops into. Yeah, that's why I just grabbed this bag to put on my trash in. Yeah, so I just kind of, this is the bag that sometimes we get salads from the restaurant down the street. Okay. And they use these really nice paper bags. So this, they're really fun to use. This is the sort of art project that my mom would have been really into. Oh, really? Then probably has crocheted mats for the homeless before. So why does she like this craft? It's crocheted. I mean, she probably would have knitted it. She didn't crochet. But yeah. Oh, I don't know. How would knitting go with this? I don't know. But so my mom tended to uh, be in like knitters groups at church or whatever. And okay. Yeah make things for like make baby blankets yeah i learned about this from a lady who is very um she helps people all the time a lot of different ways and her and her friends would get together and make these and i'm like oh that sounds so cool but yeah. then i'm telling you when i got i made it with my home at class and they um it, it was a lot more work than I thought it would be. <laughs> I'm like you, and you yeah. give these away, but yeah. So now you're just going to kind of loop them together and you don't want to pull it too tight, but you do want to make it small, the knot small enough so that it connects like this. And then you just keep going on that. So what I did was I just made a whole bunch of them. And then I just started rolling. Uh, when I had a lot of it, I would just put it in a ball. And it makes it good if you have different colors that you would make like, you know, like. Pattern? Patterns, yeah. Like, if, like if you white, have. Blue, white, blue, white, something like that. Or you, could, you might want to do like two whites because like one little strip doesn't really get very far. You know, so if you put like two whites together and then a whole bunch, like mine is predominantly brown. Mm -hmm. So I will just keep doing brown and do a f like five or six white in the middle. And then you'll have like, some people really get creative with the colors, mm -hmm. but I really mostly have this color. <laughs> you work with what you have. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny because when I did this last year, I was like, you know, people aren't going to have bags because we were, where I live, they were banned. Plastic bags were like, you know, they were signs up saying, bring your own bags, don't forget your bags and all that stuff. Sure. And then in March, they're like, you cannot use your own bags. <laughs> when I was in Jamaica, they, right when I was there... Mm -hmm. They, during that time, they passed a law that no stores were allowed to use paper bag or plastic bags. Okay. So they were, and that's an island, so it's not like they can get them if they're not given them. Yeah. So I don't know what they're. Well, when I worked at a grocery store, I saw how the, the mass amount of bags like, I saw in the back the huge stacks of boxes of plastic bags, and I saw how many plastic bags we give out every day. And I honestly kind of felt like, oh, this is probably not good. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I really agree. I mean, like, when they first came out with these bags, I didn't think it was good. Because making – you remember when plastic bags first came out? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, like well, these bags, it's always been a thing that there was plastic. Well, bags. when my mom, when my, when I was a kid, you know, we always had the paper bags, and you would carefully put the stuff in the bags. Like, you know, people that <laughs> this is like, I'm ancient. I am not really that old. I'm only 25, but I have yeah. a very good memory. <laughs> Wow, well, nope. 13 kids at 20. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, when I was a kid, it was like an art to be a bagger. 
Like you had to know what goes yeah. in what bag. You only put certain things with certain things. Oh, and yeah. You did it neatly and carefully. And it was really funny because my husband, he never does. He hardly ever does. He does shop more now because of the COVID things. Hey, Luann. Hey, Stephanie. Um, but this is really funny because he always, I always did all the shopping, like all the time, all the time, all the time. This was probably only a couple years ago. I got home and there were these bags on the table. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who gave us groceries? I'm like, who? Oh, that is so cool. Wow. Somebody gave us groceries. And it turned out that it was actually my husband went to the store and bought stuff. But he put this stuff in the bag so neatly. I had never seen him ever do that before. <laughs> but thinking back, I realized, you know, number one, he never does the shopping. Number two, um, when he was in high school... Okay. When he was in high school, he lived near Boston and he worked for a company that took orders and they would shop and they would put the stuff in bags and they would bring it to the people. He would like ride his bike mm -hmm. and he would bring the groceries or maybe he did drive at that point. He might have driven at that point. But I'm thinking that's probably where he learned how to put things in bags. But yeah. for me, he had never done it. So it was so funny. I thought somebody gave us groceries and it was, <laughs> I'm like, did you buy this stuff? He's like, yeah, I never did tell him anything. Like, like I can't wow, believe I'm how so neatly cool. you can bag groceries. <laughs> <laughs> That's a talent I didn't know you had. <laughs> Cause I'm so random. Like when I go to, when I go to Aldi's now, what I do is I just go, Mm -hmm. And I will grab a couple boxes if they have them, but I just throw everything in my car. And then when I get home, <laughs> either, either I have bags in the car and I'll bag it. I'll either take it from the cart and put it into bags in my car, or I will bring it home and just get boxes or bags and just bring it in that way. Like I don't worry about bagging it up in the store. Okay. I don't, I just kind of skip that step. I'm like, you, they just throw it in my cart. I just drive the cart to my car and then bag it that way. Very good. So well, you're giving, you've given me in case you're wondering, you've given me my, my winter quarantine project because I gardened when the weather was nice. And now that the weather's cold, I'm going to for fun. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm telling you, if you make this, okay, I made this with my home at class and I was wondering what in the world I'm going to do with this mat. And for starters, I put it by my bed so that when I get out, I don't have carpet in my room and I put it on the floor by my bed and it's really, it's really comfortable to put what, your feet on. What kind of floor do you have? You have I just have like a like right now, it's just plywood. Plywood. <laughs> because we we had rug in there, but we pulled it up. Oh, okay. so I haven't put anything in there okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we have um, like right here. Maybe a yeah. for the bathroom. Maybe I don't know. I thought of that too, but my kids go through um, towels. Like we put a towel down. Oh, okay. So I'm thinking it would kind of get gross. And then what do you do with it if it gets wet? Well, it is free, so. It's free, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> I thought it might be a really good mat for teachers that teach online to stand on when you're teaching. Okay. You know, like some people buy a special yoga mat or something. This yeah. would work for that. So it's pretty cushiony, huh? Yeah, it is. It's really cool. And it's also got... Um, texture to it so it's comfortable on your feet like right now i was cleaning out and i found this um like when you're camping you lay down on this pad and we were using it for yoga or exercising so i put that down like that i'm sitting right now but when i stand up it's really soft so that's what i'm i have on my teaching spot right now so it was free to me because i found it <laughs> Not in my closet. <laughs> That's like, 
I don't know if you saw, but on Facebook, I posted a picture of me in a dress and people are like, oh, I'm in a new dress. I was like, well, I found it in the back of my closet. <laughs> yeah. Like, trying to wear dresses that I also wore before I was pregnant, you know, like. Good. Yeah. That's like finding a whole new wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I'm home more, I'm getting rid of a lot of clothes and I'm trying to downsize everything that's another good quarantine uh yeah okay yeah i've been painting all the rooms and oh wow yeah i've been doing a lot i have a lot of paint still to use up so i'm just kind of taking a break from that and doing when does your family usually put up a christmas tree um <laughs> That is you? that is very very variable. There's no usually for that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess usually usually we wait till the last minute. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, like one year we actually got one. <laughs> Our neighbor. <laughs> this is really funny because I've actually seen videos. There are worse worse people than me about being yeah. frugal, but. We had we lived in a duplex and our neighbor went to Disney. Is the right word because frugal is a good thing, right? Okay. Well, this is this is cheap. Our neighbors went to Disney and so I knew they were leaving and they had already set up their tree. So before they left for Christmas trip to Disney, they put their tree out on the side of the road so we took it. Oh, well. So <laughs> It's not like you got in their living room. We have waited until the last minute, and then we get free trees. Like, you know, are there any free ones out there? Or even free fake ones I've gotten. I've gotten free live ones. Um, last year, I went to Walmart. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so funny last year because our basement kind of got musty, and I had some some trees in storage, and I just threw them all out. Yeah. So I went to Walmart and I'm like, I work for VIP Kid. I'm buying a tree this year. But yeah. of course I'm cheap. So I yeah. went to Walmart and they had one. It said it was $19.99. So I grabbed it. Of course it was like way inside all the millions of trees. And I'm like digging through to get to this one for $19.99. Yeah. With the lights already on it. Yeah. And then I got to the register and they're like, that one is like $49.99, not $19.99. I'm like, that is not right. I said, there was a sign right there. Right. It took me all day, but I finally got that tree for $19.99. <laughs> Good job. Did they have to go find you another tree? That was I can't remember what we did, but I know this. I remember this, that I had to bring home the exact tree, like not one of the ones in the box. I, I, it was the tree that was on display. So I had to throw the whole tree into my cart, completely put together. <laughs> so I'm like, well, this will be easy when I get home. Last year, here's this for frugal. Last year... I got a Christmas tree at the thrift store on Black Friday, <laughs> but it wasn't a full size Christmas tree. It was just like a three foot tall one. And then I got one for my classroom at Dollar General. So each of them were, I think, $10 and they're both three feet tall. But then this year I got my, our first ever six foot tall tree. So I'm talking about, um, um, uh, like reusable. I've never had like a real live tree other than when I lived in the girls dorm at Bible college, they had a live tree. That was my only experience. Yeah. With having like a, real a lot tree. of people up here, they want the live tree, but I'm like, I have trees like all over my yard. Like we have so many trees. Trees are like an abundance. So I'm like, why do I want to bring one inside? So just get some of the spray evergreen stuff. I like the lights. I like the lights the most. Tell your kids you know. to decorate a tree in the yard, kids. <laughs> I do have, like, I did, I redid my fireplace. Oh, where's my phone? I redid my fireplace and I do have, like, um, I painted it and then I have some pretty pictures on it and I put lights on it. So I do have that set up right now, but it looks more like fall. So I do love the lights. The lights is what I like the most. Yes. Yeah. 
I love driving around and seeing Christmas lights. But yes. I've never been one to put Christmas lights outside. But I was thinking of maybe getting just a few, just like for the outside of our front porch, just a few hanging down. Because our neighbors on both sides already have Christmas lights up. And I'm like, mm, that would be really fun to have Christmas lights. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> My husband is... My husband is not really into, um, he loves the holiday, like, you know, the spiritual part of it. Yeah. And that is huge. And for us, you know, God has always been good to us around Christmas. Like he's just blessed yeah. us so much with in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually got our house. The year I, we got our house, we signed on it Christmas Eve. Okay. So Christmas, God has been good to us. So we don't like to really um, emphasize the like fake, you know, Santa gave you this stuff. Yeah. We like to tell them that God gave them this stuff. And exactly. that's what I say. I say Jesus gave us you. So, yeah. so you hearing your three-year-old child be like, this is my teddy bear that Jesus gave me for Christmas. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. Oh, well, we were at, we would be at the store and the kids would be like, what is Santa going to bring you? And they're like, what are you talking about? Cause they didn't really understand the whole, like, yeah. so when they were younger, we didn't even really talk about Santa, you know, mm -hmm. but then as they got older, we realized, you know, we wanted them to know like what everybody else is doing and what it kind of means. And so then they would, they got older and they would go to church and they'd be like, Santa's not real. And then we realized, okay, we can't do that either. Yeah. So, but now my, my husband still, he loves, like, he loves the manger. He has some of his best mm -hmm. messages are about the nativity scene and everything, what it means. And it's, so it's a really meaningful time, but he's not into the Santa thing, yeah. but it's so funny. Cause my daughter's oldest, my oldest daughter's husband is That's a funny. Christmas freak. Like he will do Christmas all year long and he's a pastor too. This year I put up my Christmas tree on October 30th. So I, I saw you had it up. I love it. If I'm going to pay money for a tree. I'm going to enjoy it more time. And if we have to be home, we might as well, you know, and also, you know, <coughs> it's so crazy. We both have in common that we both threw away um broken down couch right yeah around the same time so we had the space in the living room so i didn't want it to you know have furniture in the spot where i was like that'd be a good spot for a christmas tree you know so i was like okay let me put up the christmas tree so we're not tempted to buy another couch because we have a love seat and a recliner so we don't need you know another couch i'm enjoying this space because now like we have a large living room um, but I enjoy having like half of the living room kind of like a playroom area so that the other half can be like our actual living room area. So we don't have to feel like there's a playroom in our living room. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. I know. I'm like, I was talking to my oldest daughter and I'm like, why do we think we have to have this big, huge couch in our living room? And she's like, because it's togetherness, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I guess we're at a different stage where everybody does kind of their, and we have all this space and we're homeschooling. So we have a table and then we also have those like folding chairs that you sit in to watch soccer games mm -hmm. and they're actually pretty comfortable. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I saw one on the marketplace yesterday and I was really tempted to get it, but I'm like, do I really want, like, it's kind of like carpet, you know, you get all these germs in it, you know, dirt gets in it. You have to clean out all the cushions. And Well, and I was shocked how expensive couches can be when we went to go, we were going to buy a couch when we first moved in. Um, and oh, I yeah. was like, wow, you can't find a couch under a thousand dollars. Seriously. Like in, in yeah. my mind, things should be a certain price. And that price is always a lot less than what the price tag is. Well, there are a lot of people giving them away on the marketplace, but beware. Yeah, you could get bugs. <laughs> you could get bugs and you could get so this couch. 
That was a nightmare. I got a free couch and I had to pay $80 to have somebody come pick it up. Oh, really? I was so mad. I, I wrote to the person who let us have it. <laughs> My husband rented a U-Haul. I don't even know how much he paid for the U-Haul. I didn't ask. But it it's a funny story, but I didn't want to tell him. He went and rented a U-Haul. He basically carried a large couch, sectional, three large pieces, and two ottomans. He carried them in basically single-handedly. And they were terrible. I don't know if I have my phone here, but it was, um, it was, it was like all this stuff was crusting off the couch and it was getting all over the floor. And I was, I would go to bed at night. Like, I can't believe I have this in my house. Like it was so, so oppressive. (laughs) And so, um, what I did was I didn't want my husband to know. I called a company to come pick it up, worked out what day it was. And I told the kids, I said, don't tell dad that we're getting rid of it. Cause I don't want him to try to help because he already almost killed himself getting it in here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so me and the kids, huh? Isn't that horrible when you work so hard for something and then it's I just- felt so <laughs> bad. So when he came home that night and it was all gone, well, wouldn't you know the company? I called that morning. I said, are you sure you're coming today? They said, yes, we're coming today. We'll be there this afternoon. So I was like, okay. So we took it out. We put it all out on the road. And then the company called at like two o'clock and said, our truck broke down. Do you mind if we come tomorrow? I said, you can't. I said, I already told my husband. I didn't tell. No, I told him the whole story. And I said, I don't want my husband to come home and see it on the on the road. He'll be he won't like it. And so mm-hmm. they came by and got it. So it was gone before my husband okay. came. Home. So when my husband came home. He looks in the living room and he goes. I mean, I don't even think he sat on it. We had it for two weeks and he. I don't even think he okay. even sat on it. But he looks in the living room and I just died laughing. <laughs> I was like, ah! I feel like there's something missing here. What, what, what? <laughs> so he couldn't he couldn't be like <laughs> mad about it. I just said, I hated it. I hated it so much. I couldn't even sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah. it was terrible. So I paid for it. I got it out of here and he didn't really. I don't know. It was weird. I'm like, how could he not know what was happening? I don't know. (laughs) Um, I I heard in a sermon one time that a pastor was trying to explain like why things bother housewives more than they bother their husbands, right? Or stay-at-home moms or whatever. Because we are home to see it. Right. Oh, man. It's like if you have a dripping faucet, you leave to work. Yeah. Never mind, it doesn't bother you. Your wife has to look at it all day long. And that's why she bugs you about it. We have a dripping faucet. We have a dripping faucet. Yeah. Why does it bother her? It doesn't bother me. While you're gone to work, you don't see it. It's the same with the couch. Like, oh, it doesn't bother me. I got her a couch. I'm good, right? So different kind of mindset right it was it was so bad because the kids were homeschooling so they were sitting on it and like it was kind of peeling off and the kids are like it's kind of peeling and i have two kids (laughs) that come over to like just stay with us because their parents work and they're so quiet they didn't want to say anything about it they just sit there quietly like with a blank look on their face and i would just be like (laughs) I put a sheet over it and it it still kept coming off. And I'm like, so I was just, I was just laughing so much. I'm like, I will be getting rid of it. And uh, I'm like, it's okay if you hate it. It's just one of those things. At their house, they have a weird catch. (laughs) Yeah, but they're, they're like, you know, the kind of family that, they're frugal too. Like they, they're not like, why don't you go out and buy a whole new one? You know, their understanding of, you know, we yeah. make sacrifices to. I don't know if you can, can relate to this, but my husband sure appreciates that. I know how to sew because like 
for example, he had um, a big seam rip in a pair of pants. And he was like, hey, can you sew this? And I just sewed it right up. And he was like so appreciative because it's like other people, they would throw the pants away and buy new pants. But I know how to sew. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's why, like, when I started teaching, like, when you're homeschooling, you meet a lot of people that do it yourself you know they're mm -hmm. because they're making a sacrifice to maybe the mom only works you know they're making sacrifices to raise their own kids and to yeah. and they're all into you know learning new things and everything's an experience like I taught my kids how to um like unclog drains and all kinds of things like that which I didn't know how to do either but yeah. I learned you know it's amazing but, because as you're learning to adult, your kids are learning life skills that they're going to use as an adult. Right. And so, so I was going to say, when I went to the Christian school, I taught home ec and I'm like, this is, you know, it's there, there's a different group of kids that when the kids go to school all day, they don't necessarily have time to cook and time to learn life skills and so yeah. it's like i i taught kids and this is these are small schools that had never really worked with a knife they never cut anything with a with a paring knife wow you know and these are high school kids so wow that's why even on out school i figure there's going to be kids that because they're home now we're going to find more things to do and teaching these types of life skills is, 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 is important. Yeah. Like people like, you know how to sew on a button, please help me learn, you know? Yeah. And like, I've heard people say, like talk about their childhood, like people your age, sorry, <laughs> from your generation, uh, that, that talk about sewing their own doll clothes. Oh Yeah. And um, so I'm like, that would be so much fun for a Christmas gift for my kids because my kids have enough dolls. They actually, don't have for their dolls, you know. So actually, I was unusual though. I didn't really have very many friends that knew how to sew. Okay, that, it was kind of coming out of that. But like my mother's era, mm -hmm. they made everything. If you want a doll, you make it. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so but I made my own doll clothes and my kids made their own doll clothes. Yeah, I was thinking I'd like to uh, teach my kids how to sew their own doll clothes and stuff. So when your kids made their own doll clothes, did they do it by hand or with a sewing machine? Um, let's see. Um, a little bit of both. Yeah. But I did teach them how to use a sewing machine and... Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm really strange, but that's why I get so excited when I meet other people that, like, even on VIP Kid and the other mm -hmm. teachers that, like, Mindy, you know, Mindy does all these different things, and I'm like, oh, she sounds just like me. Like, she's got her finger in every single little yeah, activity yeah. there is, you know? <laughs> well, I think it's awesome that, like, this year I learned how to garden, and my kids they got to have ownership like the marigolds are theirs they put the marigold in the pot and yeah. grew. I'm, well, I'm not good at gardening i did a terrible job this year but. well you have chickens so we have different yeah. areas of expertise because i will never have chickens That's and you should have seen me yesterday how many eggs i got i got so many eggs yesterday that they were falling out of my pockets i had I had so many eggs. It was so funny. I'm like, this would be a really great video, but, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely have chickens and that's been great. I'm going to actually go bring some, think, some eggs um, to a friend. I think Evan really enjoys the chickens because he told me in Spanish class, we were talking about farm animals. And he said, my favorite farm animal is a chicken. We have chickens. And he was so excited to tell us about the chickens. Yeah. He definitely is enjoying that chicken experience yeah and they go it's funny because if the chickens get out i have to call the kids to try and go grab them but i'm learning i'm learning to catch them if they get out 
it, it, it's, you know, you can, when your kids chase chickens, you can mark it down as gym class for homeschooling. Yeah. <laughs> the chicken today. Definitely. Well, <laughs> yeah, they, they helped me make bread with my student. I had one student oh, wow. um, the other day making bread and they helped me make bread. And I'm like, I'm glad that they did that because actually my older kids did a lot more hands-on things. My younger kids are more like the normal American. And like normal American. I like I like the I like the first batch program better than the second batch. Mm. <laughs> Even though the first batch they they felt like they missed out on a lot of things. Yeah. But I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. Well the thing is, um <clears throat> it, it's amazing to see that when you homeschool, you teach one child. And the children around them learn from observation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Esther's learning to read. Yeah. But Deborah and Joshua are starting to learn to read because they're watching her and they're interested in it. And uh, Joshi knows how to. Okay. So, for reference, Esther just turned six. Deborah's almost five. And Joshua's three. And Joshua, he knows how to spell. A dozen or so words already. Like he surprised me the other day. We had a happy birthday sign up on the wall. Um, so but we weren't at home when he said this. We were at church. He said, Mommy, no, we were in the car in the van coming home from church. Mommy, B-I-R-T-H-G-A-Y birthday. I'm like, you are three years old. Wow, that is so awesome. He loves letters. So he'll sit there and like look like practice like H-A-P-P-Y. And he likes to say puppy. And I'm like, no, it's happy. He says it because it makes me laugh. That's he, great. No, P U P P Y is puppy. So now he knows H A P P Y is happy and P U P P Y is puppy. And he knows uh, M O M. Wow, that's he goes, great. He goes, M O M, mommy, D A D, daddy. And I'm like, well, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> That's so, great. Yeah. My friend. Like, no, M O M M Y, mommy. And he's like, no, M O M. I'm like, well, technically your sister's right. <laughs> well, my friend calls that the trickle down effect. Yes. <laughs> when, have I told you? Okay. So I bought Esther a little toy piano. It's only this long, but it has like the basic keys just for beginning to learn some simple songs. And it came with a little book with simple songs um, to learn how to play. So I just sat there and I showed her, you know, the keys are marked with the letters and the, the book has the letters. So it's just, you know, my kids are little. It's just the beginning stages of learning piano. I don't even play piano. My kids already have more songs memorized than me. Wow. I sat there and taught Esther one time. And then I brought her to piano lessons with my friend a few times. And, <clears throat> Esther already has memorized two songs and Deborah learned just from watching Esther. So like one day I'm in the kitchen cooking and I hear someone playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I'm thinking, oh wow, Esther's getting good at that. And I look to my right and Esther's next to me and I'm like, who's playing the piano? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's great. <laughs> I was telling someone that Esther taught Deborah how to play piano and Esther heard me and she said, no, I didn't teach Deborah. She just looked at me doing it and now she knows how to do it. Wow. That's great. Like, just, just having a, um, uh, uh, piano and book like in the house and, and, you know, it's something that when I'm busy doing dishes or something, they can be working on that. Uh, they can, they'll play songs, they'll play, they know Mary Had a Little Lamb, and, um, and Mary Had a Little Lamb and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, they have those two memorized, both of my girls do, and I'm like, you guys know more songs than me, <laughs> like, I don't have those songs memorized on piano, so That's I'm great. like, and they, they say that learning piano is good for brain development. Yes. All my older kids did music and I kind of fizzled out because it became like a battle, you know, and yeah. it was like, I was really determined at the beginning, yeah. but I don't think they really appreciated it. So they didn't, 
but I think it's an attitude. Like some people are just more grateful than others. And, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. glad that they did it. And I think it really was more, a more musically inclined than others. You yeah. Know? But like my son, my oldest boy, um, he took piano lessons and I loved the teacher. And I told the teacher, I said, I know he's not practicing like he should, but I would, I'm still willing to bring him to have lessons and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, because I could see he had a gift, but he didn't yeah. really care about it. Yeah. But then when he got older, he, you know, he is musical. He's just really smart. Like anything he does, he's, he catches on. Yeah. So, but. <clears throat> That's yeah. why I'm starting them with piano from a young age so that maybe they can have an interest in it and it'll be something that they just kind of like, you mentioned one of your daughters. I think you. I think it was you that said it. One of your daughters says she doesn't remember ever not playing violin. Yeah, my oldest. Yeah, she started yeah. when she was three. I sort of want to do that with my kids. Not not from three, but like you know where pianos can be. Because you know, one thing I want to teach my kids is how to handle emotions because we all have emotions, and I would yeah. love it if That's they good. have a hard day and they over to the piano and take it out on the piano you know because everybody's got emotions they got to work through you know and and yeah. everybody has hard days so take it out on the piano what a what a beautiful you know write a song what a beautiful way to express yourself you know That's true yeah i played the piano i was in second grade i actually my very first piano teacher was chinese okay that's what i think is really cool to think about because she was she was chinese like from not long before she had been in China. Both of her kids were born. I don't know how she got here, why she was here, whatever. But she lived in my neighborhood and I was only in second grade, but I was able to get on my bike, put my books in my backpack and just ride my bike over. That's and crazy. I always, yeah. So I my always had, school music teacher was Chinese as well. Oh yeah? Isn't that crazy? Huh. I don't know. I mean, she was a wonderful teacher and her kids were awesome. I was not gifted necessarily, but I always was like determined. Yes. <laughs> so I stuck with it. So I play for church. Oh, that's awesome. But to me, it was like, I was only in junior high and I was, I, my piano teacher was like, what do you want to do with your piano skill? Like, where should we continue working with you? And I said, I just want to play hymns for church. Like, I want to play hymns in the church when we sing, and I want to be able to play, like, good offertories. Yeah. And so she worked with me on that, and that's exactly what I use it for. And I'm not the greatest pianist, but even back then, that's what I wanted to do. And... I yeah. don't know. I haven't met too many kids that age that want to play hymns. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> but that was a really good thing for me because um, when times did get tough, I had those hymns in my mind. And mm -hmm. um, they mean so much to me, even yeah. since I played them as a young <clears throat> the The first recital that I did with my Chinese, no, was it her? One of the first recitals I did, How Great Thou Art. That was one of the hardest songs I played at the time. Was your Chinese teacher a Christian? I don't really know. We, at that time, we just became Christians. So I don't really know if well, she was. Well, it's kind of not. cool that, you know, she maybe was introduced to some. But a lot of, yeah, a lot of people, like at that time, I wasn't necessarily a saved Bible believing Christian, but my parents did go to the congregational church. Yeah. So we did know like some about the Bible and we had some teaching of the yeah. Bible. But Makes yeah. Sense. So I don't know. I don't remember all those details. Yeah. But looking back, I'm like, that was kind of unusual. <laughs> you had a Chinese teacher? Yeah, and that I wanted to play hymns, and that was what I wanted to do with it. I'm like, I don't know why. 
I, li- I like to play classical, but it's not like... The awesome thing about hymns is you have, like, a whole... I mean, there's a lot of awesome things about hymns. But you have a whole, like, book of sheet music, you know? And honestly, song. hymns are not that easy to play. Um, because you have to... The hymns in your hymn book are written in really strange keys. So um, I met a lot of people that could play the piano better than me, like classical music, but uh-huh. they didn't know how to play hymns. Oh, wow. But because I had just like done it on my own so mm-hmm. much, like you just get used to it, you know, and you like you pick out a song and you can play it because you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's interesting too. So like when I went to high school, I went to a Christian school and there were a lot of people played the piano, but, um, I wasn't the best pianist, but I was brave enough to play for other people to sing. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah. So that came in handy a lot. Cool. Yeah. So if somebody comes to my church, we've had other people that play better than me. So I'm just like, enjoy. I love to listen to them play. So I have no problem sharing the piano. But I to, if, Oh, sorry. I have to tell you the other reason why um, I chose piano as my children's first instrument, right? So I have friends that I went to language school with and their sisters and they're in a family with 13 kids. Oh, wow. Okay. And they live in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. That's like three hours from me. But I met them in Texas at school, right? Wow. So I went to school with, with three of the sisters from that family. So I've, I've cool. been to their house. And it's so cool. <laughs> I have to tell you. Well, it, before I get off on the tangent, um, my reason for the piano is everyone in their family – all the children, well, 12 out of 13 of the kids, with the exception of um, they have one special needs sister. Um, but all, all of the children play at least piano. All of them learned piano first. Yep. And when you learn piano, you can then go on to learn other instruments, and it's easier because yeah. piano, you learn, like, how sheet music works, how, you know, how how the music sounds and how it works and piano is a good like starter instrument um and so everyone in their family plays multiple instruments but they all know how to play piano because they all started off on piano so um anyway i wanted to say when i visited their home and when i visit homes also I spent a summer in Utah and there was a family that had like eight kids. Anyway, when I'm around like Christian families that have like a big families that have a lot of kids, it's such a neat atmosphere in the home. It's so different from what I grew up with that. Like you feel like you're part of the family just because you're a visitor. You know what I mean? It's yeah. cool. Cause I grew up in a home where, um, I don't know if home's a good word for it, <laughs> um, um, but you know, unstable, broken, not a happy place. <laughs> and so, uh, to the the term, the word homemaker, to me is really important. A homemaker is someone who makes the house into a home. And um, there's some Bible verses that that talk about. A wise woman builds up her home, but a foolish woman with their own hands tears it down. And so I I uh, grew up in a home that was torn down over and over and over again. But as as the mama, we have we have the power to to build up our homes and to make it a home. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to say. It, it, it was inspiring to me visiting homes of, you know, families that they don't get along all the time and they have their own drama and stuff, but they love the Lord and they love each other and they have just a welcoming, peaceful atmosphere in their home. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to say, anyway, that was, yeah, it was, it's weird for me right now because we always had 
people in like we're always adding a few more plates to the table and you know that's so cool. it was just always a full house and laughing and just a lot of activity and do so you, did you sometimes hear like music in the background somebody's playing oh yeah all the time <laughs> all like the time. i miss I it that. My kids, um, they did the, what you call the Suzuki method, which is like uh, you learn by ear. Oh. And so they had a program. You start out with this song and then you work your way through the books. So it's really yeah. funny that I didn't start out that way, but I heard it so much while my kids were younger that like, say I'm in the car by myself or something, I'll start mm -hmm. humming those songs. And I'm like, oh, that is so funny because they're kind of practice songs, but yeah they're all classical and they're they're familiar songs to everyone but mm -hmm. this guy put it together in a, a really good way i really like the method but um yeah so they would practice every day and they also would go to like we have a nursing home it's it's probably about a mile up the road mm -hmm. so when my girls were in grammar school age Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, had little kids and it was nap time and stuff like that. So um, there were days that they would just pack up their violins and they would walk up to the nursing home. Like we had a schedule every every month at this certain time was their their time to kind of entertain the residents. Oh so they God. would go and I'm just like, just go play through your songs, like your whole Suzuki thing. So they would go up there and play through all the songs for the residents and shake their hands. And Aww. yeah, they would do that all on their own. Wow. Yeah. That is and yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. The thing so. is that when adults go and visit people at, at the nursing home, it's, you know, it's social, it's nice. But when children mm -hmm. go and visit people at the nursing homes, they light up in a different yeah. way that they don't with adults. Yeah. My mom, and, she took us to, she would play violin at the nursing home. Oh, really? We would sing. And we had certain residents that we knew that would request songs and stuff. And then even um, when I was in high school, my mom would go and take like a crit. It was the Salvation Army. They had like um, – magazines that they would go and distribute and give out mm -hmm. to the residents, you know, just some to visit with them and give them something to look at and stuff. And I think they give them something else along with it. Like, yeah, we would, we would make like every year for several years, um, we would make a, like some sort of an ornament. Like we would find out of something recyclable. Like, you know they're going to throw these away. Like, we made little wreaths out of pine cones one year. Um, little snowmen out of felt. Stuff like that. And we would give them to the residents as we went around singing and stuff like that. But I remember this one time I went to the nursing home. It was this girl. Like I'm like, she must be desperate because she's calling asking me to come. We're not like a music group or anything. We're just a family, you know? Yeah. So she called me. She made sure I got on the schedule. This one day was a terrible day, and my kids were not behaving very well. I was not in the mood. I wasn't that, like, happy, big family type thing going. <laughs> and I was like, this, I just really not don't a happy wanna... big family today. No, I don't want to do this. I, my son was, like, being terrible. But everybody got dressed up. We got our violins. Um, we packed up in the 15-passenger van. We drove. It was probably about 15 or 20 minutes we drove. And we got there. And this was a Catholic uh, nursing home. Okay. And we got up there. And I'm not Catholic, so I was a little bit kind of uncomfortable with it. Hi. Yeah. Oh, and so then we started playing and the 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 they were all women they were all nuns and we were playing and they they were just so intently listening and they were they were so loving to my children oh. and they were so loving to me they treated me like i was the queen so it like was, i was it was a nursing home of nuns yeah 
Oh, so it was like elderly yeah. ones. Yeah, oh. yeah. So then I, I didn't really think about it beforehand, but I thought these are people who have loved people all these years. Yeah. They have given themselves to kids all these years, and who knows how many they actually see. Yeah. Um, and they just really, really appreciated it. I'm telling you what, I got more out of that than they got from me. And I was just like, it was just the most, it was like, I felt like I was just revived, you know, I was yes. so thankful and I was thankful that we pursued and we went ahead and did it because they were glad and we were glad. So that's one of the things I think of right now is the nursing homes are getting neglected and they're not, you know, able to, I mean, it was bad before because they didn't can get you, a lot of customers. Can you imagine being an elderly person right now in the nursing home, what it would be like that even when your nurse comes in to give you your medicine, they're wearing a mask. You don't even get a smile. You don't get visitors, but maybe you don't comprehend why you don't get visitors. You don't know yeah. how to use technology to do video chatting. Yeah, really. It's really, it's really sad. Yeah. It's tragic. It's, like, it's my, my, yeah. my grandma, uh, she passed away, uh, the end of last year. And my aunt says, I'm so glad she passed away before COVID because we got to visit her and everything. And, and, uh, yeah, Norm's, my husband's mom passed away too, right before all of this too. And that's mm -hmm. what we were thinking, but she, yeah. she was the kind of person that she could put on a smile, like no matter how bad things got. But you know, loneliness That's is the sign really... of someone who's been through hard times. Yeah, because, um, it's interesting. Um, like you know that channel about North Korea <laughs> that she was talking about. She walked by an orphanage every day going to school, and those orphans in there were so malnourished that they couldn't even cry. Oh my word. And so it's like, you don't even realize how blessed you are. Like when I look at my three-year-old throwing a fit, I'm like, you don't even know, kid. You don't even know. You don't even know what other people go yeah. through, you know? And uh, I know. I know. I went through that cry yesterday. You know, having the strength to cry is a blessing. You that's know? true. And that knowing that true. someone will come when you cry is also a blessing. Yeah, that's true, too. Sorry to <laughs> change the No, job. it's true. It's true. No. It's so, and, you know, my kids from a big family, they don't agree with everything that I did. They don't understand everything and, you know, what kind of sacrifice. Oh, my one daughter, my oldest daughter, mm -hmm. she became a nanny for some very wealthy people like doctors and different things like that. And I was thinking that it would make her feel like, oh, I don't appreciate my my own family or whatever. But it, it really didn't. But, you know, she was appreciated by them, which was a blessing. But she was like, Mom, you would not believe how much these people pay for the dresses that look just like the ones we wore. Because Norm's mother made them. And, yeah, And at the time, I wasn't thinking, like, they thought that she was making us clothes because we couldn't afford to buy them. And she was making us custom-made clothes that were like, you couldn't put a price tag on these clothes. Mm -hmm. They were amazing. <laughs> and now they realize, but at the time, they thought they looked weird, you know? And I'm like... And it was extra special because it was made by their grandma. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And but she, I had like dress standards and she would make anything like the way I wanted to make it. Wow. <laughs> and I thought they looked awesome. Like I was like, I could never pay for this. Like I could never pay for a service like this, but they didn't realize it until they were older, you know, mm -hmm. what a benefit that was. Yeah. You know? So for me, for me, it was like you, I loved the, <laughs> the video that went around. I just sent it out um, that Trump said to be an outsider because those are the people that change the world. And I was like, you know, being different is not 
a bad thing and yeah. doing what you believe in is not a bad thing, you know, and to mm -hmm. think about what you're doing. And so, yeah, for my kids, we were different. We had 13 kids and we had a different type of a life, but it wasn't because I was being dumb or anything. It was because I was thinking about what's, what's the plan? What is my plan? And in America, we can have that choice. That's the thing yeah. that we celebrate is that everyone has their choice to make those decisions personally. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But the, the crazy thing is, um, when you're a parent, it's different than when you're a kid. <laughs> yeah. When you're a kid, you just see one side of things. When you're the parent, you see a much bigger picture. <laughs> right. You see, you know, outside evils trying to get in, trying to influence. You see uh, the bills that need to get paid. And you know the dangers of if you don't pay your mortgage, what can happen and that you could your kids could potentially be homeless. So you have all this extra pressure and planning and thoughts and, and your kids, their perspective is just on kid things, you know? Right. They have no idea what, you have no idea the things you're protecting them from and the things that, and it, it kind of reminds me of God. Like a lot of times, that's true. Like if a door closes, like we lose a job or something, I'm like, you know, God could be protecting us from something that we don't even see. Like, for example, my husband, um, like, sometimes, like, oh, like he works for a security company, and they they complained about him or whatever, so they're removing him from from one location and moving him to another. But the thing is, he's an unarmed security guard. He's trained to be an armed security guard, but Amazon is at an Amazon warehouse. Amazon doesn't want them to be armed at that location, but they had a disgruntled ex employee show up with a gun and he doesn't have a gun. So he had to get that guy to leave while unarmed. So he told, he already told them that he felt unsafe. Yeah. And a different Amazon place had a shooting. So, like, Amazon needs to get with it and, and let their security guards be armed. Anyway. but Oh, Tim's people, here. People How's the stalker, it? Evelyn? <laughs> How's the stalker? Oh, the, oh, yeah. the it, I don't know if it's a stalker, but somebody, well, I guess... Somebody's trying to mess with my marriage by making up lies about us, but we're we're blessed that that we have trust in our marriage. So it it could really, I mean, that could anyway. You can watch that video about that on my channel. I but. saw that yesterday, actually. Yeah, I don't know if I watched. Crazy. I don't know if I got to the end yet, though. But so, anyway, some weirdo targeted us and and decided to uh, make up lies and say. But it, it's helpful that I don't put a lot of personal information out there on the internet as far as like where we live and stuff. Oh. So they were saying that I was sleeping with someone that lives way super far away. And I'm like, okay, well, there's your proof. <laughs> I don't, like, so I was going to ask you, how is your VIP kid? Are you still teaching for VIP kid? Uh -huh. So um, Friday nights and Saturday nights, I teach for a VIP kid. Okay. So I'm teaching out school and you're teachable moment. Yeah. Tim said spammer. But the yeah. crazy thing is, in all the messages that they sent, they never once said my name. I forgot to say that in the video. They never said my name. They say, when talking to my husband, they were saying, your wife did this or that. And they made three different accounts. I think it was one person who made three different accounts. One's pretending to be the friend. One's pretending to be the wife. One's pretending to be the husband. Weird. <laughs> when the husband Weird. Messaged, Sorry about my wife. Weird. I don't know you. <laughs> like, what the heck? And then they already deleted the first account that was of the wife. So anyway, it's obviously like not real. But anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> Tim said he didn't look like your type, bearded. Oh person. yeah, that was really <laughs> weird. I can't even get a. I'm like, if you want to make up a lie, if I'm having the affair with some guy, at least get a guy that knows how to smile in a picture. Like what the? <laughs> at least get a good looking one. You know, come on. <laughs> like. What? Hmm. Why? Or they could have just had a guy with a mask, <laughs> so you couldn't see what he looks like. I'm like, is this person like over on their side of the computer screen, cracking up, laughing? Look at this photo I just used. Like, ha ha. But that's 
good to know that that can happen, like that other people can kind of watch for that stuff. Like I, every now and then I'll get some weird comment and I just delete it. Yeah. You know, so I well, imagine the more. It's important to know that it wasn't just one of us uh, and it wasn't just one account. It wasn't just one message. Because at first, with the Weird. first message, I was worried for a second because I was like, what if my husband believes a lie that someone's making up? But quickly, it was quickly disprovable. I was thankful for that because, I mean, people can mess up your marriage just by making yeah. up something that's not even true. Um, thankfully, they weren't very smart because, like, you can make fake screenshots and be like, look what your wife is saying. You know what I mean? Thankfully, they didn't. Yeah, you can get pictures <laughs> off of other people or something <laughs> i got a picture for the for the thumbnail i got your picture off of your uh facebook page yeah the cartoon <laughs> i like it so I you get that but yeah so and then the wife even was saying because on my facebook page it says that i'm a christian she was even saying like what kind of christian are you blah 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 i'm like lady you don't know me <laughs> like <laughs> wow you do not know me but I can tell it's a woman doing it. You know why I can tell? You just say, well, if you're real, <laughs> put some money in my bank account. What? Put, if you're real, put some money in my bank account. Don't give them your account number, Cindy. No. Well, you could oh. give them, what? Could you give them your PayPal? No. Or your Venmo number? <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, I'm glad I was scammed and you weren't because I'm not good. <laughs> So they not only messaged my husband with one account, they messaged his Facebook with one account, and then his they, they found his YouTube channel and commented on my husband's YouTube channel. I, was I like, didn't know he had a YouTube channel. He has like a dozen subscribers. Like, how did they find him? You know? Wow. Anyway, yeah, his his channel has you know when he does special music or preaches at oh, a okay. It's just like it's just like um. Uh, mostly in Spanish, you know, preaching and okay. singing in Spanish. Um, and I'm in a few of the videos where we've done special music together and stuff. But anyway, so that was funny. Wow. Yeah, all I say, what I was saying before is that, um, so my husband's now going to move locations. And also, his work schedule, he's been working all the time, and we, we haven't gotten to be with him that much. So, you know, sometimes God closes the door to protect us. And as a parent, I see more, you know, what God's talking about in the Bible about how we don't see the big, bigger picture and he does. And some of the things we think are unfair. That's so cool. This is what I got this bag of. This is my porn. So, so you can see the different colors. Maybe I can start crocheting with this while I'm holding the baby. That might be something I can do. So let's see. So, yeah, that's true. And. Well, with all this stuff that's coming out nowadays, I'm like, I'm glad that I had the time with my family the way we did, and I have no regrets. Yeah. You know, the world isn't going to be perfect, and nobody's going to grow up in a perfect world. It's just not going to happen. So. <laughs> Caleb wants to take it away. And parents aren't perfect, and, you know, as much as we try, you just do the best you can. Yeah. And just... Take it one day at a time yeah. and give each other grace to grow. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. But I think music is an awesome way to fill your time and it is very good for your brain. It's a good, um, like for me, I played the piano and the flute when I grew up. Oh, wow. So I have no regrets on that. No. It kept me busy. You're very funny. You're very funny. Yeah, I'm very funny. Can you believe that Kate? I'm sure you remember when I was pregnant. Caleb is almost one year. Yes. December 31st, he's going to be a year wow. old. Wow. That's right. Yeah. That's so funny. Wow. That's right. Because I remember all of that. Should I go in the hospital or shouldn't I go in the hospital? They're going to think I'm just... We want to have the baby December 31st, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> they, one of the nurses called, called him my tax refund baby. Congratulations on your tax refund. Yeah. I was true. like, well, Good thing. <laughs> Good thing. 
Yeah, so this... Um, 2020, we call him our stimulus check baby. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I got... I have quite a few of these still left. Okay. But I, I don't know how many bags it was, but that was all the bags I had. And I don't... I don't get that many, really. So I'll probably, in order to finish this, I'm going to have to ask people. But I do have eggs, so if people come and they... They want eggs. Um, I could ask them for grocery bags. I wish we were next door neighbors. I would trade you plastic bags for eggs. You're like, are you really? You want? Why do you want plastic bags for your eggs? Won't they break? That's so oh, weird. I wonder what the point is. What do they gain from it? Well, for example, on my Facebook. I post my beautiful, happy family, and some people are jealous of that. So what they could gain from that is wrecking a happy family. That's well, that, that's the other thing is like, yeah, what's the point? Why do they, okay, maybe yeah. you should just write back to them and say, no, you know, there are a lot of really good jobs that you can do online. If you want any help, let me know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or I could show you somebody who could help you because uh my husband and I I think we were smart in not replying. <laughs> yeah, I, that's probably what I would do, just delete. I don't have time to deal with or that. Blocks. If you reply, you're playing into their game. Okay. Yeah. You say, "Well, you don't have screenshots." So then they can come up with screenshots and then you start to doubt yourself and you know, eh, what's the point? They're messing with you. They're back there. They're behind their computer screen, bored in quarantine, eating popcorn. And you don't know what kind of information they're trying to get from you. Yeah. That's the other thing. Um, I was going to say, my son, um, he's in college, and he had told me he got into this company. It's called freelance.com. Mm -hmm. And so I went to it, and I was like, I don't know if any of you have – have looked into that freelance.com it looks like you go on there and you can do like write articles or you could do projects but it looks kind of fishy because people can just go on there and request a project and just find somebody mm -hmm. like i don't see where there's a filter like i was thinking about doing it and i was looking into it and i'm like how do i know this is safe like you said you know why do i want to give this and they could be from other countries. It's not just from America. Mm -hmm. So he said he was going to be writing some blogs, but actually I don't think he got any very far with it. But I was like, he's doing really good. He's really smart if he can figure this out because I cannot figure it out and I don't see where there's a safety. I There's another website. I'm not sure the name of it, but I was looking at it and I was thinking, oh, I could hire someone to make me a logo for my YouTube channel. Or I could hire someone to make me an intro, like, or make me a cartoon picture for my YouTube channel. But then I was being frugal that I am. I was thinking. So oh, I think we should just I stick to VIP that. kids. Just stick to VIP kid friends, you know, find somebody yeah. in the VIP kid world or yeah. online world because I think it's kind of. Uh, Luann, I have had clients fall for online scammers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what makes me nervous is, you know, getting people like even for my iPad group, sometimes people want to get on there and I go to their, their profile and there's like nothing there. And I have a rule. If you're not, if you're in like 10 of the same groups I'm in, then I usually let people in because I figure all those groups have questions to those. Yeah. But if they say, if they're not in any of the groups I'm in and they haven't messaged me and told me a little bit about themselves and they're just, they say, I'm just, even if they say they're a VIP kid teacher, how can I verify that? Mm -hmm. So I usually don't even accept them and I just, I figure if they're a real person, they'll ask again. Yeah, you know, I like but, the kid YouTubers group because we can ask for a YouTube link. But some people are, you know, I I like that it's a small group, so it's not too many people. <laughs> yeah, but, most people do have YouTube. <laughs> some of them are like, oh, I'm interested in starting a YouTube channel. But then you know, if if they're in a ton of VIP kid groups, or if their profile says they're a VIP kid teacher, or if they have Dino in their profile picture, you know, you can tell with those ones, right? 
Yeah. So I don't just accept any person into the iPad group. I mean, there could be some trolls in there, but I haven't, like, I haven't, we haven't had any problems on that group. But like so I said, how, how loosely do you crochet this? I, I just started crocheting it. I feel like it's too tight. Yeah, I, you want to leave it as loose as you can because you have to go back into the holes again. Yeah. So I try to make it, mine's pretty loose. I have holes here. Ooh, yeah. So that's what I was telling my student is just you don't want it to be real tight. Do you like double crochet or single crochet? Uh, single crochet. Okay, cool. So yeah, so I chained, I chained as many as I wanted to as far as the width. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to be a pretty good width. I don't know how many inches it is. Probably about a, probably about three feet. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, um, yeah, just single crochet because you want it to be. To you, Cindy. Excuse me. Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I was kind of fiddling with that. So you kind of want to make sure that your loops are straight. Yeah. And if it's, if you can fix it fine, if you can't, you just like, just kind of scrunch it up. Keep going. And put it in. Yeah, that's what I was just hiding a few of those little ends that were sticking out. Yeah. Like right here, you know, you might end up with little pieces sticking out here and there, but... That's okay. That's just, yeah, it's like this one I had to hide the end. So I just, so if you have a little piece that's sticking out as you're going along, you can just kind of tuck it in later. Esther, do you want to say hi? Deborah, you want to say hi? No. No? Okay. Y'all can't come in my office getting all my props out when I already have a messy office I need to clean. If you want to, if you want a prop to play with, Pick one up off the floor. Don't get one out of the drawer because those ones are put away. So Pick this is a great bags. way to use up your grocery bags. I wonder if, uh, I know Tim's probably not still here, but <laughs> we only have one viewer at this point. <laughs> we had up to four. But if when I went to Jamaica, they, they banned plastic bags. So I think in, in Jamaica, there were a lot of places where they were just bags of trash, you know, we went to uh, an orphanage and as we were driving up, it was, there was like a drop off and um, people just threw trash off the yeah. edge. Yeah. That's how foreign countries are. When you go to foreign countries and you come back here and you realize, Oh wow, our trash system and our way of driving and everything is like so neat and tidy in America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the driving was pretty crazy over there too. <laughs> yeah. You are going to jail. Definitely. Okay, my children, my children. No, 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 no. We're not getting anything out of my drawer. If you want to toy pick something up off the floor and put it away. <laughs> so yeah, so how many how's your out school going? I did sign Evan up for today. Okay, awesome. Oh, are you just teaching well. Spanish? Is that, are you doing anything else? Um, I taught one Pokemon class and I had two people sign up and one of them gave me five stars and said they loved it. Oh, good. And that student, one of the students that I taught the Pokemon class to, he was in Europe in a country I've never heard of before. And I can't. Wow. Them. Mm. I'm gonna have to look look at that look what they wrote, but uh, I was like, oh wow, I should probably learn more geography because like I know all the like you know all the basic European countries, but there's some tiny wow. things that you don't know yeah. about. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. I've had kids in California. I had one girl in England that came to a knitting class. It was so cute. <laughs> Okay, you can get those toys out, but take them out of my office because my office is messy right now, and I'm not trying to get it messier. I need to clean it up, guys. So I have a friend that um, she contacted me. She wants to teach online. Mm -hmm. She is a um, teacher, okay. but she's a little intimidated to do, like, videos. Oh, yeah. So 
I'll be working with her, so that'll be good. I, I think I might suggest that she does Go Go Kid to start with since they have the big incentive. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a Go Go Kid referral code? Yes, I do. <gasps> Ooh, you should definitely suggest that then. So the three hundred dollars incentive is it just for the teacher or how much is the referral? It's for the new it's for the new person. Like if you sign up for Go Go Kid and then you open seventy five slots. Um, you know, like from the time you sign your contract, if you open 75 slots and you teach three, then you get the $300 bonus. But I was opening up the evening slots and then I just saw on the group today that the evening slots don't count. Yeah, it has to be PPT. Well, they were, they were red. They were red. I, they were like four on Friday, four on Saturday, four, um, like in the, like in the middle of the night, they were eight, like, I don't know, 1 a.m. to whatever time it was. But if those don't count, I'm not doing it because I'm not giving up all of my VIP kid. Because yeah. I, I would be giving up 300 to make 300. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. I've already, I decided for next week, I figured, oh, well, I'll just give up two days for VIP kid and then I'll do go, go kid. And then, um, do those midnight hours. If they book, I'll just get up and do them because it'll only be for one month. Right. Yeah. And I'll make $300. But I'm like, if I'm going to have to give up all my VIP kid, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I think I'm making a diaper bag. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> My diaper bag that I love so much, <laughs> my, the zipper broke. People so. look at you like, okay. Actually, I showed this to one of my level, <laughs> my level six student. You know, we have that whole section on reuse, recycle. Uh -huh. And I showed him this thing and he was like, so... Amazing. impressed yeah. yeah he was it like thought it was like it. gold he was like that is yeah. so amazing i mean it's it's better than um i i saw it <laughs> i saw somebody made outfits out of masks like the disposable masks <laughs> they sewed them together <laughs> <laughs> they sewed the disposable masks together and made like nice and that that would be an expensive that outfit. I saw a picture of people. Were they used or unused? I mean, maybe they were used by them. You know, I don't know. Gross. But instead of throwing them away, right? I don't know. But I saw pictures of in the ocean. They were getting masks out of the ocean, like disposable masks that had been discarded and ended up in the ocean. Oh my the word! Fact that at least we banned straws. Yeah, the straw band is weird. Well, the thing is, the thing is, I kind of agree. But if you're going to ban straws, uh, ban smoking, ban plastic bags, there are so many things that are worse for the environment. Yeah, exactly. straws are bad. You're right. Straws are bad. They're not the only thing bad, though. But once you go down the road of banning, then it's like, how are you going to enforce it? And then and what, what? How are you going to be consistent? Have, what kind of society have we created when you can, you know, be fine with hundred? Like I, I'm all for like, say for cereal, I would not mind going to the store and bringing my own container and buying cereal or, you know, products <laughs> like that. Some people do that, you know, they used to do that with glass bottles for milk. You used to have a milk. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I think that would be a great way to do it. I think that we generate a lot of trash that we it's shouldn't like, be generating. It's like plastic was invented and then they decided, okay, all the things we make out of wood and glass, let's just make them out of plastic. <laughs> and then now, years later, they're kind of like, Maybe that was a bad plan. <laughs> because I think that like making these bags is easier and probably cheaper to make them. 
and you know and recycling actually costs more recycling something like say bottles you have to return all the bottles no, and you have to re uh, sterilize them okay so i ordered a shirt for my husband for christmas from a facebook ad that i saw that they have they're selling clothes that's made out of recycled bottles i saw that was that you that posted it i don't know yeah, and then once you buy something, they give you basically like a re referral code that you can get like paid a few dollars or something if people buy from their company using your referral code. So I was like, I mean, sure, why not? I'll share. But I think it's awesome that they're using like recycled plastic bottles. I mean, well, they have made you know, carpets. I know that they were make they. Like it's been years that they've made carpets out of recycled bottles. Awesome. So there's got to be other things that they make. I think there's like. You want to go play with your sisters and you don't want to be in here with boring old mommy? Okay. One second. I'm going to take the baby over to play with his sister so that he doesn't have to be entertained by the boring mommy. I'll be right back. You want to go to see the dinner? You want to see Hi, Laura. Laura says we even turned in our Coke bottles. Right. That's right. I'm not a big soda drinker, so I save a lot by not drinking soda. Yeah, we don't have soda. But my dad was very much, he was into soda. He loved soda. But soda can be a really bad thing for like your teeth, stuff like that. I mean, technically, as a society, we do a lot of things that are bad for us. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> if we really want to be healthy, we have a lot of reworking to do. I love Luann's um, Misfit Box videos. I haven't really done the Misfit Box because um, I have been doing the Every Plate thing and I think I'm going to probably stop doing that because I have I have very few kids right now and they aren't eating all the food I already have so I end up throwing away a lot of food which is not good right now because we could end up with a shortage at some point uh -huh. so I feel bad throwing away food so I need to rework my food program can i show you something sure okay so when my daughter esther was a baby i decided to crochet a major scene or start a project of oh nice oh i love it here was i made baby jesus and mary and joseph that That's was great year. And each year I make something else for it. So then I made like a, a shepherd. Oh, <laughs> shepherd. Then I made an angel. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I made like some hay that goes underneath them. Oh, that's great. And then I bought these from a thrift store. Um, it's like a little, you know, crate. Yeah. Basket for putting baby Jesus in. Perfect. So it's kind of like this ongoing project that I, I crochet a few more things like, um, oh, oh, <laughs> this was last year. Last year I made this. I tried making a donkey. <laughs> and at first when I made it. I love it. Does it look like a donkey? My husband said it looked like a pig. So I changed the snout a little bit. Oh, but, that's funny. Yeah, I love it. But it's funny. I made a donkey for them to ride in on or whatever. So I, I like it because I love handmade things and I love that it's not breakable. So my kids can, you know, play with it when learning about them. Yes. I love it. Now that, um, I love that. It's that is so like great. Box for storage. You know? <laughs> I love it. Well, my daughter, she, um, she, when she met her husband, their first Christmas, they were kind of dating and she had already made mittens. She's not into really doing knitting or crocheting or anything, but we have done it. 
So she's like, what should I make him for Christmas? I don't want to spend a lot of money, but I would like to try and do something nice. So I was like, why don't you make him a pair of mittens? You can get a nice, nice yarn, make the mittens. And, you know, it's something you put time into and we'll see what happens, you know? So she did. She made the mittens and it was like unbelievable because we had no idea that his grandmother was a crocheter and she made every Christmas, every birthday, she made him something yeah. and he kept every single one and he loved them. Mm -hmm. And so when she made these mittens for her, for him, he was like, she's the one, like she is totally the one. <laughs> I have a similar story with my husband. So my, my dad, when I was eight, my dad and stepmom moved to Arkansas and we would just visit them in the summertime for a month. And my dad and stepmom would, I mean, my dad would come up for Christmas. Like one day we'd see him like a part of a day for Christmas. Right. So mm -hmm. my husband, when I met him on, on a Christian dating website, he was living in South Carolina. Okay. And he was like, if I can get a couple days off work next week, I promise, promise, promise that I'm going to come drive all the way to where you are in Kansas City and okay. drive all that way and come meet you. And I was like, okay, here's the deal, buddy. <laughs> I was like, first of all, don't say promise, promise, promise if you're not going to do it. Yeah. Second of all, I'm not going to kiss you. <laughs> so if you're coming for that good for you i love it good for you i was like and you're not staying in my apartment you can stay at my mom's house right so yeah, absolutely he ended up coming but to me like because my my own dad uh you know he came david came a 16 hour drive just to meet me Knowing that I wasn't going to kiss him and no hanky panky was going to happen. You know? Gold. He's I gold. Was, you know, yep. it, it spoke to my love language because mm -hmm. my dad couldn't drive the eight hours to visit us except for twice a year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it meant a lot that some guy I just met was willing to drive 16 hours for no, no payback other than just he gets to meet me, you know? So I was like, and like, when you take me out to eat, like you're paying for it. Like, like you know, it, I didn't make it easy on him. You know, I didn't, you know, and then yeah, I told my daughter about you. I, I know you guys would get you know, along I really well. I specifically prayed, God, if this isn't the guy you have for me, I don't even want him to come. So like prevent yep. him from coming, you know, make his work schedule change, you know, make it so he doesn't have enough gas money or change his mind that he meets another girl or something like I don't even want to waste the emotions. If he's not the one I don't want, I don't want to even go down that road. You know what I mean? So then he came and it was like, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's awesome. And that, you know, I don't, I'm not really, yeah. <sighs> I'm, I've known a few couples that have gotten together on dating websites and it hasn't worked out so well. Oh. So I'm not, but on the other hand, I know people, friends that I've met online, like on YouTube and stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I'm like, I do, I think you can connect because you, you connect in a way that is, you're not just in a situation together, but you're connecting because of your values and your character. And I think those things are. I should tell you a little bit more. Uh, about, okay, so first of all, I think it's hilarious that my husband and I met on a website called Christian Dating for Free. <laughs> I say that's where the cheap Christians meet each other. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wonder meet. if there's one that you pay a lot for, for no, the rich people. Like Christian Mingle, all these different websites, like you have to pay. It's like you can set up your profile and then it's like, okay, now, now that you set up your profile, if you want to like be able to chat with people or whatever, you have to pay us a monthly fee. I'm like, no, I'm no, I'm too cheap for that. Too bad. So I met him on Christian dating for free. So here was my experience. I think it's kind of a funny story. So if we have time while we're crocheting, I'll tell you. So 
I, you know, I went through Bible college. I saw people all around me meeting. I, I was sure. I was so sure. You know, I went from public high school where I didn't. I chose not to date. I chose not to, you know, date around till I just, you know, I didn't do any of that. I just was, I was saving myself for marriage. So I didn't want to mess around with people or whatever. And I even was like, I think I might save my first, like save my kiss for like engagement or something. So anyway, I was just like really like cautious about that. Cause I didn't want to like, I made a covenant with the Lord at camp. I made a promise that I was going to save myself for marriage. So I didn't want to date everybody or what that's what we taught our kids not everybody went along with that uh philosophy mm -hmm. but that's what we wanted for all of our kids but yeah. yeah so it has to be a personal decision it's not something you can force on anyone yeah exactly you really mm -hmm. have to you have to have strong beliefs to um uh, you know, when you meet someone really special to really hold hold tight to that covenant, you know, and yep. and wait. Yep. So that's why I didn't I didn't want to waste my emotions on all, all these people, right? So I, I met guys that were my friends and stuff and I was interested and they weren't or vice versa. So anyway, I graduated college and I was still single and I'm like, Oh <laughs> okay. So I was getting ready to be a missionary, right? And so I was trying, I was like, okay, Lord, I guess I'm going to be a single missionary. So I was trying to be a single missionary and it just, I kept having the door closed in my face. Like I was offered a job and then I was fired and then it, it was just thing after thing. Right. And then, so I ended up, I was working at an elementary school as an ELL aide. All my coworkers are girls, you know? Right. Going to church, there's maybe a couple of single guys my age, but they're not interested in me. You know, it was just kind of like, so then I tried the Christian dating website. So first, I didn't know how to upload pictures. So I talked to this one guy like, oh, hey, he seems nice or whatever. He lives in my city or whatever. And I was just like, oh, hey, you know, talk to him. Interested in, in talking or whatever. So I was like, I don't know how to upload my pictures. So he was like, okay, text me some pictures. So I took some really nice, you know, pictures in the grocery store, <laughs> selfies or whatever, sent them to him. And he was like, oh, sorry. I only like skinny girls. Nice. Okay. He should have told you that first. Uh, text, send me a picture. <laughs> I was like, okay, I didn't send you a picture to get insulted. So, okay. That's I was like, crazy. I don't like shallow guys. So bye. Yeah. So then when I did upload pictures, I got a little bit mean on my profile. And I was like, if looking at my pictures makes you either like or like me, move along because I don't wow. like I want a man. You know what I mean? Like, uh oh, I lost your sound. Wait a minute. You lost Maybe. my sound? Okay. Maybe it was me. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So anyway, so then this other guy, which you can have your name, whatever you want on that profile. So like I had my name as Evelyn Joy, but then somebody else is like, drummer boy 86 or whatever and i'm like what's your name like this person started chatting me with me and i was like what's your name and then he blocked me he was like i already told you my name you did i didn't notice in his previous message he mentioned his name so he blocked me because i asked him his name wow and i obviously was not observant enough i obviously didn't care enough so i was like i was so done i wasn't ever going to log on to this website ever again but I was I was working on getting a master's degree and I was super sick and I was at the library and I was trying to upload because I didn't have internet at my house at my apartment. I I was I took the day off work because I was super sick. I happened to have uh be using my friend's vehicle because I babysat for her. And I was at the library trying to upload this thing to the internet, this online portfolio, and it was taking forever. So I had already checked Facebook. I was super bored, so I decided, I guess I'll check that dating website while this thing is uploading, right? So what had happened was I found I had found my husband's profile on on the dating website, but I didn't think it was real because the name was David Israel. That's my husband's name, right? The name was David Israel on there. And like I said, you can pick whatever yeah, name. Yeah, that you sounds do. kind of maybe that's not real. And the profile picture was David slaying Goliath. So 
then everything in the profile was just like tons and tons of Bible verses about what he believed about family, what he believed about life, what he believed about everything. There's just tons of Bible verses. So on that website, you can like either send someone a message or you can wink at them. So I just like winked at him because I thought it was like, oh, this is cool. Somebody made a fake profile for like if David from the Bible had a profile, this is what it would be like. It's what I thought. Oh. So I winked like, oh, this is cool. So anyway, he messaged me back and he was like, oh, you like me? And I was like, uh, you're real? <laughs> like, I thought this was fake. Wow. He was like, um, I'll text you real pictures of me or whatever. And I'm like, this is so weird. Okay, fine. And so then we started texting. And get this. Okay. I was trying to sabotage it from the beginning. Um, <laughs> he was like. That's what you're supposed to do, girls that are watching right now. <laughs> send me a picture of Make you. Make them right work. Now. He said, send me a picture of you right now, what you're doing right now. And I'm like, this is so perfect. I'm sick. I have no makeup on. I look awful. And I'm at the library. Let me send him a picture so this guy will leave me alone, right? <laughs> because the other guy, I took nice pictures and he was like, oh, I only date skinny girls. I'm like, ugh. Oh. So then this guy, I'm like, okay, I'm going to send him a really yucky picture of me. So he'll just leave me alone. So I just didn't even smile in the picture. I, I think I, well, I have smiled and my hair was a mess and I just didn't have makeup on it or anything. I just sent him a picture like, hey, this is me at the library. I'm super sick. You know, bye. Nice to nice <laughs> have with you, David, Israel, whoever you are. That's great. Um, so then he was like, oh, you're gorgeous. I was like, what's your name again? <laughs> Come again? What was that? And then we started, Hi, mommy, let's get married. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I I was oh, I was funny. like, okay, this is interesting. So it turns out, you know, some of the things he was writing, you know, on his profile and stuff, it wasn't perfect English. So it was like I from reading it, just reading it, I was like, either this person has some sort of like maybe this person's autistic or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Or he's or, or, in a mental hospital right now. Yeah, or, or English is their second language. So oh, when yeah. I started talking to him, I found out he was from Ecuador. So that was like literally. Okay. Awesome. When I was in Bible college one time, there was this guy that he was really desperate to find a wife. And he was just like, he sat down with a group of us girls at, we were we were at a restaurant and he came to the restaurant and he came and sat with us uh, without us inviting him. There were three of us and he was asking us what we're looking for in a husband. And then he was trying to say how he could fit the bill, like how he how he was like, oh, you like someone smart. Well, I get straight A's or whatever. You know, it was like a really awkward conversation. So I had told that guy, I, I want to marry someone from South America. <laughs> Oh wow! So, um, That's awesome. This is looking interesting. This is looking kind of neat. Yeah. Um, so it, it was just kind of funny. Well, because the thing is, when I went to Uruguay, South America, for two months, I was sort of thinking maybe I'll meet a nice Christian man at one of the churches or something. You never know. God can send you as a single missionary. I knew people that yeah, met oh, yeah, in the mission field. So I had I'm sure there's a lot of missionaries down through history that got married to people. Yeah. So I had my eyes open when I was in Uruguay. But the thing is, in Uruguay, the churches are mostly women and children. There's a whole lack of men there. Oh, wow. So I feel like if I did meet a Christian guy there, I'd be taking him away from all these Christian girls that didn't mm. have anybody, you know. So anyway, I thought it was kind of extra special to... Me, cool. a, a Christian from South America, you know, and then he thought it was, and I thought it was awesome that he's lived in America and he knows English, um, because that way he understands my culture. Because a lot of times people have that, you know, cultural. So how long? How long had he been in the United States? When we met, he had been in the United States probably. Um, well, let's see. He came to the United States at 19, and he was 27 when we met for Halloween. Oh, okay. So, like, eight years. But his mom had been here, like, 13 years. Oh, wow. So his, mom, his mom came here first legally and went through the process to bring her son legally. Wow. Awesome. 
So, um, anyway. So, anyway, I was chatting with him. We were both bilingual. So, that it, we're both Christians. We're both bilingual. And later on, then also he told me his birthday is October 22nd. And my birthday is April 22nd. So, like, his birthday is my half birthday. And my birthday is his half birthday. So, that was kind of oh, cool. That's cool. So anyway, we were talking. Then he wanted to talk. To, we were just texting. He, we, he wanted to talk to me on the phone. I was like, no, I'm trying to upload this thing. I'm at the library, you know. So you have to wait. <laughs> so I get out to the van after I. Wow. Uh, so by texting, though, you figured out that he was from Uruguay and that he. Not Uruguay. He's from Ecuador. Ecuador. Well, I, mean. I have been to Uruguay, but yeah. Yeah. He's from Ecuador. Yeah. So I thought that was really awesome. Wow. He, he told me in our first in our first text conversation, he told me he was interested in joining the U.S. military. And I was like, wow, I'll pray for you. That's like really like that's a difficult spiritual battle yeah. you know, going in the military. You know, there's a lot of stuff. And he was so amazed that I said I would pray for him. He was like. Wow, you know, because he had talked to a lot of girls and even visited some and tried to meet them and stuff. And a lot of times girls would act like they were so moral and then he would meet them and they weren't. You know? So so when I said I would pray for him like that was cool to him, you know, and stuff. So anyway, it was kind of cool. But another thing I liked was like, I wasn't looking to date. You know what I mean? I was looking for someone that was looking for marriage. And see yeah, on my profile, Lisa Shelton. I don't know Lisa. Do you know Lisa? I don't. Lisa Shelton. She's Welcome. crocheting plarn too. Wow, I'm crocheting plarn too. Wow, <laughs> we, found, we stayed on long enough to find a plarn crocheter. <laughs> that's awesome. There, maybe she's crocheting while watching us. Yeah. Maybe the YouTube algorithm suggested our plarn video. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, so our first conversation over the phone, he was talking to me in English. I was talking to him in Spanish. And when I talked to him, I pronounced his name David. And he was so impressed that this American white girl knew that his name was pronounced David and not David. From wow. I was like, so I was nice. We're just impressing each other. I can imagine all the fireworks going on. And then he was <laughs> saying to me. Oh my goodness! He was wow! To me in Spanish. Oh my word! Like, He's a winner. Yeah. And then he said he wanted to come visit me, and I was like, I don't know about this, buddy. Like, don't make promises if you're not going to keep them. You know what I mean? Because he was like, I promise, promise, promise that if I can get a couple days off work, I'm going to come visit you. Sixteen hour drive. I was like, don't say promise. Like, if you're not serious, you know what yeah. I mean? But then, sure enough, he did it. But I told him, you know, I'm not going to kiss you at all. So there's no incentive to come. <laughs> wow. You know, and did his you keep mom your promise or did you what? back down? Did you yeah, keep your came. promise or did you back down? He, no, he came. And and you didn't kiss him. No, yeah, I didn't kiss him. No. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't kiss him until we got engaged. Well, we got engaged two months later. <laughs> it was extra incentive, you know. That's okay. I love it. I think that's great. My daughter actually waited till the actual wedding day. That's awesome. Yeah. So she, it was pretty cool. Very cool. And, you know, she doesn't regret it at all. But, like, when I was her age, I never heard of that. Like, I yeah. wish that I had, I wish somebody had suggested that to me because. Yeah. I hadn't thought of it. Like, you know, and so a lot of people criticize and they um, make fun of people that make that choice. Yeah. Those who make that choice, I don't know anybody. Like, I don't know too many people that did make that choice, but <laughs> my, I know my daughter doesn't regret it at all. And her husband sure appreciates it. Yeah. You know, he knows that he's special, you know. So that is awesome. They weren't even allowed to be alone in like any time at all until they got engaged. And it was so funny the day the day they got engaged, she was like an emotional wreck. She didn't know what was going on and everything was going bad that day and 
it, all the stuff, I can't even remember all the details. I just remember she was like crying and having all these fits and all the stuff was going on. But we knew that she was going to get engaged that day because we knew the plan. And what so was she upset about? I can't remember. I think maybe like her car broke down or something uh, and Roger was acting kind of weird and it was just all this weird stuff was going on. So we told them they could go to this special restaurant and um they could drive home together and so it was so funny because we're the whole time we're like they're alone like it's our first kid you know first time yeah. in a serious relationship and we're like thinking about it we didn't actually go looking back i wish we had gone to watch you know the whole thing from behind the wall or something but we didn't watch they were at the restaurant yeah they got engaged and everything and they drove home and my daughter's like you know we took pictures of course when she got home of her and roger in the ring and all that stuff Aww. but then um she's like i know why you let us drive home alone together and i'm like why why did i you know it was because you guys got engaged you know she's like because you knew i'd be on the phone the entire time calling all my friends <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, actually, I didn't know that, but you just made me feel a little better. <laughs> that is so funny. So I can imagine this guy that, you know, he, he proposes, gives her this amazing ring, gets to drive home alone, and she spends the whole time on the phone. Oh, my goodness. But that's the way it is for girls, you know. They're just like... <laughs> But yeah, yeah, he's a really good guy. He he came from a, a home that he didn't really have a dad. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he had kind of different dads in and out, kind of hard situations. And so, um, but Is he just did everything the way we, huh? Is he close with his father-in-law at all? My husband? Yeah. Um not close but he appreciates him like you know yeah. they do they help each other do things and stuff like that that's cool um but you know but roger he he did everything like we said like he didn't their first date was with the two of us and the two of them mm -hmm. <laughs> so like we checked him out he had to ask norm if he could date her and he did everything the way like whatever we said he did it and mm -hmm. he was just really awesome and so yeah we have a really good relationship and you know That's it's, nice. it's a real blessing it's it's really the best yeah you know and not everybody is going to have the same thoughts and standards and things. Yeah. And we have to accept how they want to do it. Yeah. Some of my other kids have made other choices, but I still love them. Kids have to learn the hard way. We work with it. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't regret it at all. And my, my son, my oldest boy, he actually... Um, found a girl like they kind of met on Facebook but we had we knew some of the same people that they knew and stuff but he he met and married her within like I think it was a month or six weeks or something they just got married <laughs> so that was a little fast but you know it's the COVID thing and you know you have to think about the thing is it's not that bad to rush into marriage. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. It's better to do that than to try, you know, try them out. Let me try you, you out like see how it goes. And all that. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not my thing. So, yeah. So, but it was kind of, it was hard because he moved to Florida. So. Oh, he already moved? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that was a really big change. So that's why I, I'm glad I have my online job, my online friends, my plart. <laughs> well, I'm glad I have my plart. <laughs> Lisa Shelton. She's a she she says she often watches, but she doesn't often comment. Oh, so I assume watching. you must be an online teacher then. Maybe she's a VIP kid teacher. Yeah. I feel like I might recognize her name. I'm not sure. 
So I should probably go because I do have like a life. Yeah, thank you for being corn. But I did this with my I did this with my out school student. She signed up for a finger knitting class. And I just mentioned that I had made this. And so for the last class that we had together, she chose to make this. So it was her choice. Oh, cool. It's what she wanted to do. So it was really fun. I had a great, great class with her. I hope to see her again. But and thank you so much for the happy discussion. Yeah, good job. All right. Don't tell That's anybody. Cool. <laughs> I, oh, she's a friend of Christy Carter. Okay. Very good. I haven't seen Christy in a while. I, I've been wondering how she's doing. So I haven't seen her make up some videos recently. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we'll see you. Make sure you or do a video on your channel. Show us. Show us good. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day.